Hey, Mind, Body, Spirit folks. I'm Courtney Riley. I'm one of the co-hosts for the Virtual Summit, and I'm stoked to be here today with Vanessa Rodriguez. Thank you, Vanessa. Hey. Um, before we jump in, I want to tell you just a little bit about um, Vanessa's incredible offerings. Vanessa is a certified holistic health counselor, a functional nutritionist, and an intuitive nourishment guide. Vanessa is the founder of Wildly Rooted, where she helps wild-hearted women build physical health and vitality through a blend of modern functional nutrition tools, ancient healing modalities, and intuitive guidance using Akashic Records so they can unleash their creativity, tap into their spirituality, and support what they really want to get in life. Oh my gosh. Vanessa, you truly offer a full spectrum of mind, body, spirit in, with your clients when you work with them. And um, I would love for you to begin by sharing with everyone what functional nutrition even is and a little bit about your path in discovering functional nutrition. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Courtney, thank you for that kind introduction. I'm so excited to be well, here. You're, you're a badass, V. So. Ooh, you are. Mm. I love it. Um, yes, where do I begin? So um, I functional nutrition is one of the core practices in my work. Um, and it took me a long time to get there. So I'll kind of paint a picture of um, what functional nutrition is um, and then how, how you know, my path kind of brought me here. Um, so functional nutrition is really a root cause, what I call a root cause resolution practice. Um, it's looking at taking components from ancient traditional uh, medical traditions, so traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, right? these are really beautiful traditions that are looking at the body as a whole yeah. and using food as medicine. And so functional nutrition is right in line with that. Um, and instead of looking at the body as a whole bunch of you know, disparate, uh, compartmentalized systems, it's looking at the body as a whole and also looking at the environment and body, mind, spirit, you know, kind of like the theme of yeah. this whole event. Yeah. Um, and it combines it with personalized, modern, holistic tools and research. So things like functional lab work um, and incorporating other newer sciences, for example, epigenetics. Oh. Um, and psychoneuroimmunology. So there's there's all of these more modern tools and research that we're able to sort of integrate with these more traditional um, ancient practice, uh, practices. So that's what functional nutrition is. It's really also looking at, it's getting to the root of an issue um, mm. and it's looking at the person as a whole. So it's person-centered versus like disease care management. So what I have seen a lot and what brought me to this space um, was my mom when she got sick. She got sick with cancer when I was in college, and that to us was kind of like this big aha moment, but also smack in the face, because we had no history of breast cancer in our family. My mom was the first. Um, there, there didn't seem at the time to be any signs and all of this, so um, for us, it was really a surprise and it was a scary time in our lives. And that is kind of the catalyst of what got me to get into research and, you know, really dig and find out what is actually going on here with my mom. And what I found was that um, well, she and I are very similar. You know, it was kind of like I was looking, peering into my future if mm -hmm. I didn't change things. Right. And I, I kind of had that in mind. So um, it was it was really looking at our food, like what we were eating. No, none of the doctors were really telling us, you know, maybe you should look at what's on your plate or look at environment or look at stressors. It was really looking only at, um, you know, genes or history or kind of like this. It's this scary random thing that happens to you. Um, I think now, you know, the, the times have shifted and so... Um, even in conventional medical circles, it's known that a lot of these things in our environment impact our health. And that's what epigenetics is about. It's about okay. like our environment really impacting our health um, and how it you know, can modify our genes and things like that. But anyway, so 
you know, going going deep with this journey with my mom um, and her journey with breast cancer just opened up all of these doors uh, related to holistic health and you really using food as medicine and the power, the innate healing power of our bodies and the intelligence that we mm-hmm. carry. And if we can just feed ourselves, feed our body what it needs mm-hmm. to do the job that it already knows how to do, um, then we're in a much better place. And you know, the problem is that a lot of times that doesn't happen, you know, mm-hmm. we kind of get off track or we're in environments where that's not possible. So mm-hmm. um, that's where I first found functional medicine and then functional nutrition and using food as medicine in that way. Yeah, it's super cool where versus looking at getting rid of the disease element, eradicating just the disease through chemo or through certain treatments, you are also w- wanting to ask the questions of how can her system be supported through that, but also what are like, I've heard you often talk about like, what are the ways that she could be supported in a nutritional way to actually heal, right? Not yes. just not just even like, let's get you back to where you were, but like, what's, what are, what are you missing? What, what even created the environment that allowed this to occur? I, I, is, is also exactly. part of what the curiosity is. Right. And then yeah. for, I know for me, I know for my own self, um, I've always viewed health as like a multifaceted endeavor that yes, there's this, these pieces of, um, health that have to do with how, what, like, am I putting greens in my body or am I putting in fried food, right? Am I, um, what did I eat today? What did I drink today? Um, and what's going on on that level? But uh, it also has really been a huge part of what's going on for me spiritually, what's going on for me emotionally with my own stuff. Because there's been times in my life where I've eaten perfectly, but then like I have psoriasis and you know skin issues and I have bowel issues and all sorts of stuff happening. But then there's other times in my life when I'm not eating perfectly and I'm doing great. So I know that there's this other totally. other layer. And that's why I love that you also, with your functional nutrition piece, where you're looking at, um, you know, people's, uh, you know, thyroid numbers and adrenal stuff. And you're, you're checking into the actual um, blood work. But along with that, you are uh, offering this intuitive nourishment guidance piece, which I just, I love that, mm-hmm. that name that you have um, created in for your business. And um, in that, you, you involve offering what's called Akashic Records to your clients. And mm-hmm. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that piece, too. So what, is the, what are Akashic Records, and, um, and, and how do you incorporate that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you for bringing that in because... Uh, I work with a lot of folks, women with chronic diseases or chronic health challenges. Mm. Um, and what I started to find in my practice when I was really diving deep with the functional nutrition and that even for my own life, it only got me so far. And it, and a lot of times it would only get, um, folks I was working with so far in their journey. Very helpful. Right. But that you're right in that there are these deeper layers that impact and can direct our health in ways that we maybe can't understand looking at a lab, looking at, you know, blood work, looking at what's on our plates. Um, And, you know, even aside from stress, we know that stress is a huge component related to how your body is impacted and in your immune function. But Um, What I have found is that there are these even deeper layers, these soul layers. Mm. Um, And so as I was going through my process and, you know, working with people, I myself was going inside my own journey and deeper with my intuitive practices. And um, and we could talk about this in a moment, but just the impact of like how beautiful nature can be in helping us to cultivate that um, Mm. intuition Mm. and that inner guidance when, especially with healing But what, you know, so it's one of those things where you're on your path and then things kind of just literally fall in your lap or people like tell you things. And, and so that started to happen. And Akashic Records was one of these things that literally was coming at me, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like entering my path, like you need to 
you know, dive into me and learn what this is about. And so um, I started doing work using the Akashic Records, and I'll explain what they are. Um, essentially, the Akashic Records are a vast energetic database, and they hold the vibrational imprints of um, your soul, mm. your soul's history, the purpose in life, and really anything that has its own like sovereign vibrational entity. So, for example, even a place you could do mm. records on a pla- you can read records on a place. Cool. You can read records on a pets, <laughs> mm. um, and even on a business because it's a it's a, it has its own vibrational energy. So um, I started going deeper with the Akashic Records, which I think it's a little easier to understand them using metaphor. Like the way that I like to explain that I learned from my teacher, Susan Lipschitz, who I believe you're also having on the event, and mm-hmm. she's so special. She's awesome. Um, she describes it as like, you know, in the times we're living in, it's like an iCloud. You know, and we right. have these files, um, images, and, and video, and just like files that we're uploading to this iCloud, this, this like energetic database right. that we can't see, but it's holding all of these files of our history. And this is the history of like our soul's journey. So it's, you know, spans lifetimes. Mm. And um, I know that for, for some, it might be kind of like too ethereal to grasp, but um, I really love to bring this work in. So the, what I do is as a reader is I'm able to tap into somebody's um, Akashic records and check out those files and ask to receive information pertaining to this person's um, soul journey relating to healing themes. So the way that I use it in my work is really rooted in the other work that we're doing. That's mm-hmm. super like evidence and science based, right? Right, right. Um, so we're bridging these. And so it's uh, really looking at healing themes and anything pertaining to the evolution of this person's uh, soul journey and what it is that they need to um, to really optimize or enhance their innate capacity for healing. Yeah. And uh, that has been a total game changer when I brought that into my practice. Cool. Um, and yeah, so it's really cool to, to see kind of those two combined working for people. Well, if I look, you know, if I look back at my healing journey, each, each time um, I've really injured myself or something's been going on with me internally or whether it was an actual injury, it's, it's um, if I really look back and examine it, those have been those pivotal moments that have invited me to step into a different space in my life, a different um, path, right? So, so you know, I, I hurt my feet when I was 21 and I was a major athlete and I was like totally struggling with my identity and who am I now and what's going on? And that's when I found yoga, right? And that's when I stepped onto this wow. other path. And if I hadn't been injured, I never would have done that. And I think what I'm hearing from you is, so this Akashic Record piece is allows to shed some light when there's sometimes the way of why am I why do I have this dis-ease in my body and there's there's often it's wildly rooted in reasons right so for totally. your business of wildly rooted you know and and getting back into what is at the root cause of stuff mm. you I, I totally understand what you mean and you're saying that you have yes you want to look at the root causes cellularly you know what's going on but then on another level as like on maybe that like you said a little more esoteric level that can feel a little flowy or fluid to us um is the more soul reasons you know what is our soul asking for why have we asked for this lesson you know and and that can be what the dark night of the soul when you really hit the spot at times where you're like God, I've done everything right. You know, I have all yeah. the right things in place. What am I missing? Right. And, you know, with you offering this way of reading, it can shed light on that. So would, yeah. you, would you say that's probably one of the most powerful parts of combining these practices? Or are there other reasons that it's powerful to combine it? Could you expand on that? Yeah, oh my gosh, there's so much there that you just touched on. Mm-hmm. Um, I did want to mention, you know, there are a lot of uh, more... Um, earth honoring cultures and, and like ancient traditions that see dis-ease, disease as a teacher. Right. And so it's not like you deserved it or you did something wrong or bad or your body's failing you. Um, it, you know, it's really cultivating a 
um, curiosity around that and a, um, a commitment to yourself and uh, really, you know, what I see a lot with, especially when you're dealing with chronic health challenges, you know, you can feel like your body has let you down or like, the, you know, why me? Why? Why? Why am I not getting over this? Why does it keep coming back? And in those instances, I have found that it really can be teacher. Um, and it's not to like teach you a lesson because you're bad, you know, but it's like being teacher so that because you are ready to move forward and expand, right. you know, your soul's healing journey and and to uh, discover your own medicine in this journey, even if it doesn't look the way that you want it to look. Oh, totally. um, and so I think that is the biggest um, the biggest lesson that I have learned doing this work with folks and with myself is that, um, you know, we are, we're like these 3D puzzles, right? Or mm -hmm. like 4D. <laughs> right. And um, so we have all these different dimensions to ourselves. And, and, but we also have our own medicine that we can continue to discover. Like we were born with that. And I, I now believe like life is kind of like this unfolding of our own medicine for ourselves, you know? Oh, and so we'll find ourselves in these situations where sometimes it feels really crappy or really difficult. Um, but it, like you said, in the dark night of the soul, it can be those moments that mm. are the most transformational um, and powerful in as a catalyst into something else for you in your journey. So, uh, you know, one thing that I have found is the peace that can come with like an Akashic reading. Every, every single person who I have read for, um, for one of my clients already knew on some level, mm. intuitively, the information I'm giving them, right? right? And you hear that a lot with like other kinds of, um, you know, intuitive practices or sure. healing. It's like the the person knows, the body knows on some level. Maybe they can't. Uh, maybe it's not conscious, or maybe they can't verbalize it. And so the the records kind of comes in and shines a reflection. It's not information for me. It's information from that person's records, right? So it's it's kind of just putting up a mirror and showing a reflection of what they might already know but need confirmation on or need a deeper understanding around. So um, I have found the records can be particularly powerful with that. It's like, you know, no, I'm not crazy. I am feeling this. You mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. Have you, can you give an example like of yourself or a client, you know, some way that, you know, maybe the, you've done the research, you've looked at the nutritional component, you've looked at the, um, you know, the blood work, you've looked at everything and things are, you're treating everything, right? You, you have the, the right support system in place. And then when the Akashic records have come in, can you give an example of that or? Yeah. So let's see one. One that comes to, I'm just going to tell you whatever comes to top of mind. Um, yeah, so I had one one woman who came to me and um, fairly healthy throughout her life. Um, you know, she's had some some issues with bones and things like that that she was dealing with that she kind of came into. And she herself was doing a lot of um, what I would call healing work. So mm -hmm. um, she does sound healing with uh, bowls and things like that so and that was a really long journey for her and for her it was like her health and you know her healing journey took her to that as well um, so we opened up her records and she, at the time she was dealing with this like um, like post-infectious pneumonia type thing like her really terrible cold she couldn't get over it, it was like an infection and um, she was just curious what that was about because it kind of came in, you know, from from nowhere. And so we opened up the records and we took a look. And um, the way that I receive information is really kind of like picture based and story based and metaphors. So I'm being shown an image of um, like the landscape in her lungs. And it's kind of like it sounds kind of gross, but like a cesspool, you know, like, mm. the, you know, like a stagnant pond. It was just very stagnant. And how, you know, when when there's any stagnancy with water, it just start, starts to accumulate, you know, life and bacteria and, right. and all these things. So that's what I was seeing. And I was like, wow, it's it's really stagnant. And usually things are you know supposed to be flowing. So I wonder why isn't it flowing? And I was shown 
um, like a, a plug kind of something was plugging it up and it led it showed me that it led to um, her throat kind of like that there was some kind of a uh, plug or blockage there so then you know I got kind of the hit of there's something about singing for her so I mentioned oh. you know do you sing and she said you know what that is something that I feel like I'm called to do with my sound healing practice but I'm afraid I don't have the confidence to do it I haven't done it you know and like this and that I've been grappling with that and I was like well I really feel like this is connected to the blockage you know like the, mm. that there isn't that movement and you're being shown like you're, so, you're really supposed to step into this and so it was just confirmation for her right. that I already knew this and this aha this makes sense and for her it, it really did make sense and uh, after that you know she got better and she started singing <laughs> yeah. um, and incorporating that with her but that's just kind of one where you know, you, you're trusting yourself and your own intuition about it, mm -hmm. but it's also not something that we can see on a lab, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, and to stay open, it might sound crazy. It might not even resonate at first, but to just kind of, uh, stay open in one's own healing journey about these uh, images or feelings that, that you might get, because they could be signposts to help you get back on track or get back on the healing path. Right. Yeah. And then, and really point you in the, in the, well, if there's a right direction, right. Or, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. like what I'm really also hearing from you is to be this, like I often say in my life, like this curious detective about the healing path, you know, to really yeah. put on that hat and the observer hat. And that's what you then do with your clients. You're then meeting them. And in a way you take the role of the curious, curious detective, with them, you invite them on the journey with you. And you know, it's so often I think when people are really dealing with an illness or something that brings them to that, that place of the dark night of the soul where you're just, you feel so confused and lost, it's, it's, it's nice to have someone hold that light, right? To be a beacon and, and to really um, carry, carry us to realizing there's more information that still can be discovered here. Um, yeah. I think that's, so beautiful and I mean you know I would love for you then to give an example like if if I were to be working with you is there some sort of example um, that you know you could give us today yeah um, so in how in how like we would work together yeah and... so how, you know like when you're working with someone because obviously you're, you're <laughs> you have them do certain like so what happens you yeah, know, when, okay. when I'm working with you. <laughs> so um, usually it starts off with a really deep dive, um, and it, it's looking at all these different areas. So we're going through, you know, a full-on health assessment and intake, and um, you know, I'm looking at lab work. I might request certain labs to look at. I'm looking at your food, your mood, your poop. I'm having you track on that, right? All these really practical things that we need to be looking at. And then also kind of diving deep into um, what other things do you feel might be impacting your health, right? And so I want, it's a really collaborative process because it, I'm not here to heal anybody. I'm just here to help guide somebody in their own self-healing. Right. And so it takes that kind of partnership. And, um, and so then, you know, when we have the actual sessions, then we'll dive deep into those functional nutrition components, and then we'll open up the records and really kind of bring that to, to the picture in what I call to fill out your sacred ecology. So the way that I see it is that we all have um, these all these different areas and um, our timeline as it pertains to our health. So for example, the environment in which we were born and we grew up or, you know, our childhood, and we have these inner and outer ecology. So that can be things including, you know, your thoughts, belief systems, um, your microbes, your, uh, you know, hormonal status, right? So these things that are inside endogenous. And then these outer things that impact us, our environment, you know, the foods that we eat, uh, chemicals, mm. pesticides, people, relationships. So that's our outer ecology. Mm. And we're always swimming through, our ecology is always changing, right? Like sometimes there could be some that are uh, mainstays 
uh, for us, but uh, we want to look at bringing in the puzzle pieces in, remember this like 3D, 4D puzzle of a person's sacred ecology. So we can paint a really good picture of what is going on and what areas might need um, nourishment at that time. Do you have deficiencies? Do you have, you know, are you, is your relationship rocky, right? Are you in a place that you absolutely hate or like a job? So it's filling out these areas and, um, and finding what's going to help you to move forward. Uh, yeah. And create the ecology that you want because, you know, the, there's a saying that our biography is our biology. Hmm. And so, you know, your story, that story that you're holding on to absolutely impacts and informs your biology and, and what actually happens um, in terms of your health. So if you can start to, like you're saying, step into that space of curiosity and look at your story and start asking questions. Well, is, do I know that to be true? Mm -hmm. Can I rewrite this part of my story? I mean, amazing things can happen that aren't seemingly related, you know, like a body issue that might be um, related to that particular story that you decided that you were going to look at or change. So almost like the biology of belief, like what stories you're carrying is yes. totally affecting what's going on for you cellularly, what's going on for you emotionally, what's going on for you spiritually, right? So they're all multi-layered is what, is what you're saying you look at. Yes, and that's an amazing book. I highly recommend yeah. anybody to check that out, <laughs> Biology yeah. of Belief. Um, so then would you say, what's the golden nugget today? You know, like, so if, what's the overarching message that you want folks who are listening right now today to kind of understand um, when, when listening right now? Yeah. You know, um, and that's such a big question, and I yeah. feel like it's, it's so rooted in my life mission. <laughs> you know, it's like okay. For years, I felt like, you know, what's my purpose? What's my mission? And, and just doing the work and following my work, um, I've stumbled upon it, right? Stumbled. But it's like, I feel like, you know, when you do your life work, that's where the answers come through, you know, rather than really just trying to find out and ask these questions when you're, you're not stepping fully engaging with your life. So, for me, I found that to be true in this work, and um, it's really about helping people to um, really step into their healing path and journey as like a proactive participant and mm -hmm. a co-creator of their life, and know that they have their own medicine. They're their own medicine person, you know, uh -huh. like. They can have all of these other guides and partners like, you know, doctors and healers or, or therapists and all of that is beautiful. But at the end of the day, all they're doing is helping to bring out more of your own medicine. And nature is really what taught me that, you know, really being in nature and observing nature and, and so many earth honoring traditions have such um, you know, beautiful philosophies around it. And no wonder, you know, they've lasted for thousands and thousands of years, right? Because there is such an innate intelligence and wisdom in all of it. And so my ultimate goal is really to help folks to get wildly rooted into themselves. Mm. Because once they're able to do that, then they can, um, you know, build that trust and build that confidence and intuitive knowing, um, is that they need and what medicine that they can give themselves and then in turn give to others. Uh, that's a, the other piece that I have found with a lot of people that I work with is so much of um, what they're going through in terms of their struggles is also related to how they see themselves in the world and how they want to make an impact in the world. You know, mm. I feel like we're all healers on some level. Um, and it doesn't matter what you actually do in life. Mm -hmm. It's you are bringing your gift and your element to this like vast big picture. And so um, helping people to really get rooted in that and to be um, wild and in letting that out. <laughs> yeah. And letting yourself, I totally hear you, letting yourself figure out what the medicine is for you. Right. It's mm -hmm. like. So I know that you love 
um, like you were saying, diving into nature. And I, I know that you also utilize nature-based practices with your, you know, the clients of yours who are open to it and who are um, find that that is the medicine for them, which I feel like with our society right now, you know, so many of us are overly connected to our, you know, smartphones and our smart computer computers and our, you know, the, everything that involves technology. We, we often, you know, I can even feel my, my pocket vibrate sometimes and my phone's not even in my pocket, right? It's like, it's that, yeah. you're that kind of tuned into it. So to actually, sometimes the medicine that I know you offer as well is to unplug, right? To unplug from, from all these external um, inputs so that you can hear again the internal input, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So you're, that... you're talking about like the technology piece and that reminds me of, you know, like the old computers we used to have where now you have to do it too. Some of them, they can defrag them. So you're literally defragmenting the computer so that you can clear it out and create space. And it rearranges the layout of the files on your hard disk for faster access. That's what defragging is for computers. And we have to do that. <laughs> right. And as humans, I feel like we forget we are nature. We, mm. It's like we are nature. Uh, we are made literally of the same stuff. And so if we can... if I grew up in, you know, the inner city of Chicago, okay? So I didn't have a lot of, like, trees. And, yeah, Chicago has some nice... But our backyard was, like, cement, okay? So it's not like I was surrounded by nature. But I had the sky. I had the bird song. I had my body and, like, the, the cycles of my own body, especially being a woman and, and going deeper... And just starting there, like finding a patch of grass and touching it with your bare hands, you know, or your bare feet. And just kind of like it's taking a moment to open to this vastness of nature that surrounds us that maybe we're not so open to all the time because of like you were saying, we're, you know, we're closed in with that technology. So that's a huge component of my work, um, especially now and looking at these cycles and seasons, how we all have our own seasons for things, right? Like, people are different. We are impacted by the seasons and, um, you know, the planets. And then we have our own life cycle, you know, and our own things that we go through. So um, just rooting into that, I think, is, you know, you don't have to be surrounded by a forest to, to get the medicine of nature. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. And I know that um, when we were talking about doing this, you were uh, wanting to create an offering for those who are listening. And um, I'd love for you to share a little bit about what, what that offering is and where those who are listening could find it. Yeah, thank you for that. Mm. Um, so I, speaking of the sacred ecology, um, I wanted to create something that just was like a starting point for folks to on this journey to to root into the beginning, the very beginning and the landscape of their own sacred ecology. Mm. You know, it first takes kind of like st taking a step back and just creating awareness around what is actually happening and what's going on or what has happened. And so um, I created a an audio meditation and journey oh, wow. so that folks can yeah can explore that uh, their own sacred ecology and go through a journey of self discovery through that and just as a starting point to really get these questions going and these ahas because like I said everybody ha knows already like at some level so just to help kind of bring some of that up and forward and clearing. The clutter. So um, I've created a, a journey meditation audio, and that's available on my website at wildlyrooted.com. Um, I also have a podcast. It's called Feeding Your Wild Podcast. It's about um, it's a conscious lifestyle show, really looking at speaking to amazing practitioners and healers, experts like yourself, Courtney, um, and and looking at these all these things that we're talking about today, what are all of these pieces of nourishment that I can bring in on all these different levels, you know, the body, mind, and spirit. Um, and 
and really finding the medicine within ourselves. So that's also available on iTunes. And um, I have a gift for the MBS crowd that I'd love to, you know, connect and offer with anybody who's interested in in diving deeper. Um, I have what's called soul nutrition sessions, and it's really combining the functional nutrition and the Akashic record piece in in a session. Um, And so I'm offering 33% off. Aww. For um, for the first 15 folks who sign up, and um, that's going to be on a special page just for MBS. I can send that to you, but it's going to be wildlyrooted.com forward slash MBS gift. Awesome. So folks can sign up for that there or reach out to me and ask questions. Say that one more time. Yeah, it's wildlyrooted.com forward slash MBS gift. Good. And if people wanted to, you know, get in touch with you, would going to your website um, and connecting with you that way be the best way? Yes. So I have a contact form there and my email and all that good stuff. So oh, I wow. and I would love to, you know, I love engaging with people and I would love to hear um, more about what it is that they want to learn and know. So yeah. I, I really welcome that. Well, and definitely I so encourage everybody listening to go to her website and download the audio Vanessa, you have such a beautiful voice and such a beautiful way of taking people on soulful journeys. Um, and they are wildly rooted and wildly hearted and lovable and, and conscious and so intelligent and wise. You, you carry such grace with you and, um, and care and uh, finesse. And um, you do have that, you know, I know you often talk to yourself that you have that like wonderfully geeky part too that <laughs> loves to look at the science, loves to understand the numbers and and go deep that way. So when I hear you talking about diving deeply, um, I know that when you're working with people, you're, you're looking deeply at the functional nutrition piece. So you're really wanting to get, um, an understanding of the landscape on that level and then also on the soul level. So thank you for taking this time and blessing us in this community with meeting us here today and, and helping even me just, you know, reminding me and us that, um, it's a journey, you know, that there's, there's, medicine messages inside of all of those dark shadowy spots that that can sometimes feel lonely and and worrisome and um but that often like the biggest medicine comes out of those so just to encourage everybody who is on a journey and you know what if you're at the healthiest place possible and you don't have a fire you're putting out right now right because it's it's often the best time also to do some of the 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 deep dive right because you're not just putting out the fire and in and in anxiety you actually have a little bit more cushion to um look at some of the other stuff that hasn't been dealt with so totally um, go deeper I, with that. I encourage all of you to reach out to vanessa vanessa thank you so much for today um big hugs and loves Oh, Courtney, you are so beautiful and such a bright light in my life and for so many others. So it was such an honor to be here and share. And I love this. I love you. And uh, thanks so much, everybody, for, for tuning in. Thank you, everyone.